Hey everybody, Bulin here. Earlier today, we released our first video of the how-to series, how to make storyboards in Procreate. And that was a time-lapse capture with a little bit of editing to stretch it out and a little bit of how-tos here and there. And it came to about three minutes but this was an actual one hour long video and we decided to release it anyways with my voiceover. So what you're about to watch is that video uncompressed and unedited and as I work, I talk you through it. So if you really wanted the in-depth version up to what to do and how to use the app Procreate to create your own storyboards, this is the one to do it. I go through everything from choosing your template, loading it as a layer, locking that layer and going ahead and creating more layers and plotting and then inking and then recoloring and what have you, and even adding text for your screen direction. So click, enjoy, share with others, and hopefully you learn something. And if there's something you'd like to learn, please give us a shout and we'll see if we can make the next video for you that way. Hey everybody, feeling here, we're gonna create some storyboards using Procreate on our iPad. And you'll be able to do this really easy on your own if you want. So I'm going to show you how to load a template. Now we have templates available on our website right now, buellinhasand.com under downloads. Go ahead, take a look. There's a link in the description of this video, wherever you're watching this on. And you'll be able to download a variety of different templates for yourself to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use Procreate, open the app, go ahead and start creating something right now and it's really simple just make something new by pressing plus at the top right there and go to screen size this is generally a really good size to start with and it prints really really great so what we'll do is we have a blank page here and our bottom layer will be the storyboard template so we're going to tap on the toolbar and we're going to go to add and insert a photo and i like to have an a album uh, set up of just different templates. I got a lot of different artwork here as you can see over the years everything's been kept in the cloud. There we go. Templates. And the template I want to use today is this one here. This is one I use all the time for a lot of different shows. This is our bottom layer. Leave it as it is right there. And I'm going to slide here till we see lock and tap on lock. Once we've tapped on lock, we can't use this layer, but we want this to be non middle We don't want to manipulate this layer here at all. We're going to press on the plus, create a new layer here, and then we're going to choose our pen. Or I'm just going to use a regular 6B pencil. So I'm just going to make up a scene here. And as you can see here, we've got the show and we've got the scene and the shot numbers. So let's zoom in and you can take a look there. We've got scene, we've got shot, we've got show, and we have page. Now, say your sequence will be larger than six shots. Well, we'll go over that. We'll take, we'll deal with how to package up and bundle everything. Today, I want to talk about how to create a storyboard right away on your iPad, and you can get your work done faster by using these pre-made templates and inserting them in. So let's just start with something simple like Create a horizon line and we'll just go, it's going to be a wide shot of a tree in the sun setting. And we're going to have some bushes here and we're just going to layer it in. Now, how did you get the blue and how do you have this working here? Well, what I've done is I've actually chosen this blue pencil, this pencil here, but I've also gone to the color palette and I have a, a basic thing of colors that show up normally here and under palettes and I like this manga colors right here, that blue that's been selected. I, I really like that for your planning. And the th lines out here are looking a bit too thick so I'm just going to shrink the lines here and make it so I got tree so uh, my director will sit down with me. I got a, a shot here and I want, uh, I want a hill with some trees, right? We're gonna have some trees here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a shot that's gonna start here and we're gonna push out and we're gonna go down to the next panel and it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna do like a crawl back or zoom back and we're gonna have the sun open up on the entire 
valley. We'll say that there's a valley here. And the sun is rising right there. So say that this is the sun. And this is the arrow saying that the sun's rising. And we have arrows coming this way. We are showing that this is a camera move moving back. And this is vitally important to have your arrows. We'll have the sun this way and we'll play with some lighting. And we're gonna create another shot of here. We'll say that there's someone. No, let's not say that there's someone. Let's choose our eraser. Let's say that we have, the camera continues to pull back. from that and we're going to have that the sun and the valley like this the sun is rising this is an, and this is a window say that this is a window here and we're going to continue so they want to say that this shot is now scene one shot one scene one shot one Continued. I'm just going to do an arrow for my own reference here. Scene one, shot one, continued. This is how I like to plan to get all of my shots ready before I give a final line work on everything. So we're going to have a uh, zoom back reveal. I can't spell it. Window. This isn't so I can give it to my directors this way. This is so I can be sure that when I'm drawing this scene the way I need to, that my directors and my photographer, director of photography, and everyone else, the production coordinators, managers, producers, all will have something to work with. And we're going to continue this shot. We're going to keep going back just like this. And then we're going to show that the, we're pulling back to this room. And we're going to have the bedpost here. I'm going to have a person sleeping in the bed. And I just realized I might have made a very, very complex shot with something as simple as show the sunrise and show where the sun rays are hitting. And we're going into the room and we're still pulling back. It, this is one continuous shot. And then we're going to have a cut. We're going to have a guy turning over in the bed and then we'll cut to a person waking up. This will be the only shot and the only cut in the bed in this scene. This will be shot one, scene one, shot two, a bit of the bed and we'll have it so we're straight on the character waking up. There's the nose. There's a bit of the eyes and it's super, super rough. That is how we're going to start this shot. So here we have very simple, plain shot. Now what we do is we're going to tap on the tap top area here. As you can see, you're in Procreate. Your screen will literally move the toolbars away so you can continue to draw. So what you do is you tap on the area at the top like I just did. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create another layer. And this layer, we're going to go add to tap. And I'm going to go back to layer two. And I can even rename it. And I can rename this here. Blue lines, just like that. And here I'm going to go black lines. I don't know how many times in my life I have been drawing on the same layer when I create a new layer and I kept drawing on the blue lines, it, uh, it's not that great. Um, you'd have to start all over again. You just delay what you need to do. So what I like to do is now that I know what we have here, I'm going to go ahead and we see here a locked layer of our template. I can even rename this and just go, nah, I don't need to, but you know what I mean? You can go ahead and do that before you lock it. We have our blue lines, tap on the N and reduce the opacity by dragging it back and forth. You can see the quality of how almost transparent and invisible this is. It's really quite, it's like having Photoshop. Go back, 
highlight and tap on the black lines. Now, I'm not going to use a black pencil, but it will become black soon, so I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go to ink ink. Personally, for me, I like technical pen. I'm going to go about two-thirds, one-third, one-third size. And if you see, there you go. Light stroke, thick stroke. Thick to light, thick to light, just like this. Double tap to erase all your, your stuff there. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just start lining up just a basic idea of what a tree would look like. And I'm just going to do the horizon line like this. Remember, my directors are going to need these very, very quickly. So turnaround is really important here when it comes to storyboarding. I'm going to do just some basic happy lines and make a happy tree just like Bob Ross. He's my spirit animal. I'm going to make a happy, happy tree just like this. And we're going to go like this. Just make some strokey lines like this. Remember, you don't want too much detail. This is a tree. All this stuff is going to be switched to black. What we're going to do is we're going to add some basic lighting in here as well. The whole idea is how could you make your storyboard panel work with something as quick as, you know, simple lines. We just want to lightly touch. Oh, oh, look at that. Sun rays. Sun rays. That's the sun. I'm lightly tapping the pen. Now, if I wanted to make them thinner lines, I can go ahead and just drag that bar. This bar here controls all of the stroke and the thickness and helps with the line weight. So, and I like to do that when I want to add some like grit or stuff like that. But uh, I think for this instance, I'll just keep going like this here. We'll keep it a very, very, very thin line here. And I don't need to add too much pressure. As you can see, the lines are quite thin. And I'm actually really digging this here. So what I've done is I, I've actually added some other edge of a, I can see when I push really hard, the line weights were really thin. I'm just adding more of a horizon here, more rolling bit of hills or whatever, and just lines up like this. Hey, maybe that's just like some nice fields or whatever. Now, I've drawn this, and we've gone ahead, and we're going to go ahead and we have to keep this and create this layer here. Ignore this layer. This is going to be our editing layer. So from now on, we're just going to go ahead and choose red. This whole area is going to be here, but it's going to be smaller. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you now with a little trick. First, what I want to do is I want to go back, use my colors back here, and I'm going to do a few other things. I'm going to change the type of pen I'm using. And Ink Bleed gives it, as you can see right here, a nice coarse edge to it. And this is what people associate with hand-drawn, is the roughness of the paper. When people see clean, clean, super clean line art, they think it's immediately digital. Even though you could have had a phenomenal, phenomenal pen to work with, you could go ahead and uh, fool a lot of people by making hand-drawn artwork look like it's digital. And some artists are really great at doing that. Terrence on chain on Instagram is phenomenal at that, making his hand-drawn artwork with pens and markers look like it's 3D, but it's all handmade. It's amazing. Uh, a few other people, Addy Grenov for Iron Man and Marvel Comics, everyone thought he was using a computer to paint his artwork with, but it was just acrylics and pencil crayons. So it's just how well you do it. So now we're just trying to give it that roughness to it here with our stuff and you know what these make great trees you know this kind of fuzzy edge a dirty pen you should experiment with the types of pens you have here in procreate because this actually will help you with whatever it is you're trying to mimic here and it, there's a lot of different brushes you can use and let's just go over the kind of brushes you can add there's a dry ink if you see dry ink goes like this i'll zoom in and you can take a look wow look at that I love this. Here we have the dry ink going on and we're going to give the background some texture and just to kind of improve 
what we're doing. I'm going to reduce the opacity on this pen. I'm going to make the pen tip larger so I can just go ahead and make it look like it's naturally going to be a gradient here. Now when we switch this to black, we're going to go ahead and give this the type of look that looked like it was done with markers. And this is also going to help with our lighting. So when it comes to lighting, let's talk about lighting quickly, guys. I know you guys are like, hey, you thought you were going to teach me how to draw something like a story. But yeah, I am. Lighting is a big part of it. So we're going to have ourselves some lighting. So now that we've got some lighting here, we have a scene that requires lighting. So the brightest spot here is going to be here. And the darkest spots are going to be here. These areas and X's are all going to be dark spots. The brightest spot is going to be here. So it's going to get less light as we go that way. So how we do is we work our way inside. And I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to really blow your mind about how you can really mimic real natural lighting with two or three steps really quickly. Let's go back to our black lines which we're painting in blue. I understand what you're getting at. Don't worry, you're gonna be fine. Now, let's go back to dry ink, guys. Now, I wanna go ahead and create a really cool looking layer, and I wanna get this layer here and copy it down. So what I'm gonna do is, since this all has to look the same, we have to copy and multiply every single time. This is the main image, and it's gonna go down to the panel below, and so on and so forth. Since we've done this, swipe to the right on a layer, open the layers, swipe to the right, duplicate. There we go, we've doubled it up. Now, it's on top of each other, you can't tell. It's just slightly darker. So what we need to do is tap the arrow and make sure that we have everything on uniform and magnetics, and I'll show you why. When you have it on magnetics, that blue line appears. And this blue line means it's going to move and align itself with the layer above it. If I take it off, I can just go anywhere I want, and then it's not going to line up. So let's double tap on the screen to undo what we did. Let's keep magnetics on right now. And then I'm going to pinch this screen, and I'm going to shrink this. That's exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to fill in around it. But what I would need to do first is to keep duplicating to make sure and then shrink this and put it right in the middle and see how it's aligned? That's what we want. And then I'm going to zoom back a bit and I'm going to go ahead, swipe and duplicate and put it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that image is going to be pretty much center of frame. And then I'm going to do one more pinch, go ahead, shrink, there you go. Now we have this is our original layer. This here is our final layer. We have to merge them. So what you can do is you're going to tap by touching the top with your one finger and the bottom layer of black lines. And you're going to go ahead, oops. We're going to squish them down. Now they're all one layer. And this is exactly what we want to get at. So now that we have only the window appearing, let's make a new layer. And this is going to be rename it and call it room. We're not going to go there yet. We're going to finish filling in what we need to for panels two and three. So what we're going to do is get this technical pen and keep the ink lines about here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish this in here you see how things get a bit fuzzy like this i don't want to really get now i'm going to go ahead and make like some more of the horizon just guidelines like this and then i'm going to go back and change my pen and i'm going to just keep going i'm just going to keep going like this you know it's just it, it'll be easier we know where the light source is going to be. It's going to be right there, right? Remember to double tap and undo, people. That is going to save your butts when you're working. And if you go into your settings, you're going to make sure you're going to have 
your undo set to almost infinite because I promise you there will be times you will need to do that. So I want to go back here and choose the same brush I did from earlier of dry ink and I'm just going to fill in to make it look like like this. If you notice that, you know, if you go over an area with dry ink pen, it'll darken it again. So it's like you can really use that to help mimic your lighting for your scene. And here we go. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to make this happen here. We're going to pretend that we have the sunlight going this way because let's go back to this red layer here. I'm going to choose my red pen. Now look at this. The sun is here and it's coming out and only going to be really lighting this core area because it gets darker towards the edge. Remember, the sun is still coming up. So we want to make sure that this camera move and it's coming out that way, this way. These arrows are all going to disappear, but we're going to make fancier arrows. I'll show you that later. The light starts here and it's going to go out into here, but it's all dark. It's all going to be dark and we're going to leave some spaces open. So a great way to get rid of that. I just literally did the mistake I told you not to make earlier. See, even I make these mistakes. That's why you double tap undo all the time. So let's go back to <laughs> getting our damn pen here. And the cool thing is you'll be able to mimic this and blend it out and no one will be, no one will be the wiser. This is how we're just going to go ahead and just do this. It's going to be so much cooler. So then I'm going to fill it in a bit. We're just, we, we don't want to have too much detail on this part here. Simply because the more detail we have, uh, it, it's just going to get lost in translation there. And we have to remember when we email this PDF package and we send it to a production, no one's going to be able to print it. No one's going to look at that detail because our eye needs to be focused on where the scene's going to be. And the scene's going to be next on the room that we've established right here. So we're going to go ahead and finish with this here and panel two. You see we, we're adding in the layering and just keep tapping using the dry ink brush here just like this. You see it's got that nice texture. And I've used this uh, three brushes, two, two, three brushes constantly when I storyboard. And no one's the wiser. And the great thing is everything prints beautifully because you have to remember a lot of people still print to paper. Yes, productions will send everything out when it comes to uh, distribution of the storyboards and scripts and everything by emails as a PDF. At the end of the day, they still need to print stuff out because people need to see what it's going to look like. So here, and that's going to be, the room is going to be taking over this stuff here. So turn off that red layer. And what I'm going to do next is start establishing the room. So let's just do some cleanup here get rid of these here. Choose the eraser tool. Like this. Just like that. Now I want to go ahead and since this is going to be really all black. I'm going to show you right now how to recolor this scene. I'm going to tap on the wand here and we're going to go down and tap recolor. Now you see the crosshairs that show up. It's chosen the blank space, the blank area. So that means it wants to fill the entire page blue because we have that at the top right in our inkwell. So drag around until you find the area that you want to recolor. I'm choosing the most solid area, which is this tree we painted earlier. And then I'm going to tap on the inkwell. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose pure black. And there you go. That's it. That's, that's all you need to do. And you get rid of the layer below. And there you go. You have it. So if you want to also do some stuff like some like slight cleanup, and we can go ahead and clean up. Uh, choose. Uh, I like to use this uh, medium airbrush here, this, this hard airbrush. And I just like to go around to the edges if I want like this and just erase, just erase all the other stuff outside of the frame just to keep it a bit cleaner. If you want to do it a lot faster, you can go ahead and choose the uh, selection tool and choose rectangle. And then you can just select the areas you want to delete and 
tap on the layer and clear. That's it, and you've cleaned it. You can keep doing that over and over until you have cleaned up your area the way you like it. And I'm just gonna do that real quick while we're here. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw the room. So let's go on the, the layer above, and we're going to establish the room here. So if I remember, the window appears in panel three. So let's start with drawing a line in panel three. Now let's really get into what Procreate offers in terms of helping you create the right kind of lines. And a lot of the times you can do it handmade and just go by hand and just keep it straight. Or if you don't wanna waste your time trying to draw a straight line, go to the actions area, go to canvas, drawing guide, edit your drawing guide. We're gonna choose by 2D grid. And I'm going to go increase the decrease the grid size so I can see more of a grid when I zoom in. And then I'm going to make sure that if you look at the bottom right at the screen, you can see assisted drawing. Tap on assisted drawing. Now, make sure that when you tap on this and you see room, it says assisted. Because any line you make now will stick to this grid. See how I chose this type of brush like this here? Just like this. I cannot draw sideways at all if my life depended on it right now because it's stuck to this grid. You cannot go out of this. If you want to do a diagonal, you just draw a line and hold it and it lets you do a diagonal. We don't need that this moment here. I'm going to choose a different uh, pen here, increase it, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a straight edge. I just don't want that fuzziness. Um, I don't mind the fuzzy of, fuzziness of that this type of pen when it comes to specific kinds of shading, but at the end of the day, I don't really want it. So uh, on top of that, I like to do things like to create like a highlight area. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose white as the color and lightly touch it. I'm gonna lightly touch it. No, I, don't, I want it more centered. There we go. And now I want to do that little hold it, draw a line, and it'll pop up. And I'm going to go this way. So if I hold the pen, that didn't turn out too good. Go to the center of it, draw a line across. See, it just pops out. That's what you want to do. It didn't even work. See how you got it? It's a lot of... That's uh, ah, pissing me off. So here's the thing. If you don't want to do that, Turn off assisted. That's it. Tap on the room. You can find assisted right there. And that's when you tap on it. So right now I want to get to this edge. I'm going to draw a line and hold it and it becomes a straight line. So these are the drawing tools that they built within Procreate. I highly recommend everyone experiments with these and to create what it is they need to create because this will save your bacon. And just as I'm doing it here, I'm practicing what I pH. I am literally drawing a straight line and holding it. Just like that. And I can see a mistake I did already. That one there. There we go. It's, it's really simple. Draw the line, hold it. It becomes a straight line. Just like that, it's really simple. And this is how we're creating a window frame. And since we're gonna copy this, we wanna make sure that this is gonna look good pretty much the whole time. I'm just gonna draw some squiggly lines like this to make it look like we got some light coming in. And it just really, really does help with creating the illusion that we've got a window frame right there. And I wanna show you another little trick right with this thing that it would surprise you that a lot of people don't think about what they're doing. We're gonna recolor this. What we can do is we can usually just change the opacity and it becomes grayer, but we don't want that. We wanna go ahead and recolor this. And we don't want it to be pitch black. You see, I went to the black area. We want it to be, you know, to a good point gray, like that maybe and the opacity, keep it up at 100%. And let's just change the coloring to, let's go back to get that color going. Let's get this, not black. We want it a gray, a dark gray, almost. And simply because 
This is really gonna save our butts here. Go back with the line tool and black line, the, give it the outline here. So when we go ahead to reproduce this and send it to production, they're gonna be able to see everything what's going on. They're gonna get that this is everything. We're gonna turn off the drawing guides just so we don't really need it right now. And you can see that we've got the window there. And I'm gonna go ahead and since this is room, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And then I'm gonna drag it up right around here. And then I'm gonna shrink it because this is exactly where it should be in the frame. And I think I can shrink this a bit more like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and move it below and shrink this a bit more. Actually, the smartest thing to do with this is to actually continue drawing it on this one. And we're gonna steal the color that I established in this and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll use something to fill in the gaps nice and big. We're gonna use an airbrush and uh, the nice round edges here. And just go like this here. See, you just we just need to fill in the window. And I'm just gonna shrink this here. Just like this. Now it's very strange if for some reason I have, um, I see a little bit of a problem here. You see it's got this right there. I don't, I don't get why that happens sometimes, but I mean, this is, you know, not everything's perfect, but that's what we're doing. We choose the layer. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna blur it down like this. I don't want the focus to be there anyways. I want the focus to be on the window in this shot. I'm gonna go ahead back to the layer with, this is that one. And I'm gonna go ahead to pinching these two together and merging it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this as drawing assist and edit drawing guide. There we go, we're back on drawing assist. Here we go. And here we are. Here is that window frame. This is that window. We're gonna go ahead and draw this window. Yeah, it's a bit off skew, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch select this area, this rectangle. I'm gonna make this look like it's, uh, you can see that the, the window's frame isn't even centered. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stretch that part out. And here's what we do, turn off magnetics. And I'm gonna go distort. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stretch it out. There we go, we've got it. We've got the room, we've got the window, we have got it all. So I'm gonna go back and I'm filling out this black lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it, smudge this stuff out. I just like to use a smudge tool sometimes. It just saves my butt. And again, it adds, it adds like a lens blur. I kind of like that sometimes. It really does help. And I'm just gonna go ahead and probably just manipulate that background. And just so we can see the sun, like that. I'll go ahead and smudge, smudge, smudge. But the key here is not to have that here. Now, I like to manipulate what I'm doing here a lot. You're gonna see this. Go back to black lines and we're gonna create the, the rest of the room. So I'm just gonna, yo, we're on drawing assist. Let's turn off drawing assist. Now, here's another great tool that Procreate has. And draw a bedpost, draw a circle, hold it, and it becomes a circle. You can edit the shape and go traditional circle. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tap like this, like that. Edit the shape, rectangle, and it's straight. It's that simple. It's that simple. And again, draw a line, hold it straight down. If you want it to be straight, go like this. If you want it to be right angles, hold a finger on the screen while you're using your pen and it goes to those angles there. Straight like this, go to 45, 
like 20, 30, 45, 90, and you create your lines that way. It's really quite unique. So then I'll just go ahead and like this, draw the lines like this, and just kind of with your pen, make it a bit more messy because um, it you get that hand drawn feel to everything. It's really, really easy if you know how to use your tool. I'm just gonna draw some cross line hatches like this and we're gonna go like this. And I'm gonna draw something that looks like a person sleeping. I don't want the detail there. An old headboard, just like this. And it's very, very easy to go ahead and get this done here. Now we're gonna go ahead and copy that layer. Selection tool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy and then add and then paste. Using the selection tool, we're gonna go ahead, move it down, it becomes a whole new layer. We're gonna shrink, see we've selected the bed and the window and we're gonna go like this, tap. Go back to the black lines and let's do this smudging stuff here. Let's just continue to make it look like, yeah, that's outside. And let's continue drawing back on our layer inserted. I'm gonna go ahead and merge down. You can tap on that as well. You don't have to do it that way, but it's just easier if you can. I'm just gonna make it really, really rough like this. And there's a person sleeping and there's a bit of a pillow like this. And we're gonna go ahead and just put that circle roughly in there. If you do a curve and hold it, it becomes a curve. So Procreate has all these tools you could be using and most likely you're not. So I'm just gonna roughly rough in what the blanket looks like here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in our character. So since I have to put a bit more definition in his face here, I'm gonna go back and choose the lines and we're gonna go ahead and Put some more definition of what this guy looks like. And we're gonna go like this. Like that. Some shoulders, cause the guy is waking up. Like that. And just really rough it in like that, and he's got that. We'll have the edge of the pillow here, and it's gonna work out just fine. So again, a bit of the headboard, bit of the bed post, and now that I can see that better, I'm gonna turn off the drawing assist, um, simply because it just gets in the way. Now that I can see that better under the blue lines, I'm gonna go back to the room, and go back and choose black, go back to black here, back in black. The best ACDC song ever. I'm just gonna start with the eyes. And just at this point, you should be able to know how to draw certain expressions of uh, people when they're in a specific situation. And I always say that my characters act whenever we are storyboarding because you can't just be the same blank, blank expressionless face all the time. We'll deal with uh, we'll deal with that one day about how to draw specific faces all the time, but it's always good to look at a face, watch a cartoon about how people go ahead and do uh, expressions and they overdo it. They exaggerate the expressions when it comes to um, cartoons, especially with eyebrows, because it's, it's a great way to let the, the people know this is a surprising moment and everything. So since it's a farmer, I'm just gonna draw like some shadow uh, you know, he's got to shave in the morning or just grow his beard, whatever it is. I just want to show that the guy's, you know, waking up, you know, I got to shave all the time. I'll draw the bit of the blanket here like this. Uh, my, uh, my uh, notifications I want to turn off, it seems like, but whatever. Uh, anyways, guys, so we're going to rough in the shoulder. And let's just make him get, have some character. Let's just put like, he's got a tattoo on there like this. 
we don't know where he's been. Let's just say he's got some scarring here. Draw in a bit of the black for the hair. Not too much, just something. So we can see that this guy's got bed head. You know, you want you want people to know that the guy's getting out of bed. I don't want to put too much detail on the bed. I do not want to put detail on the bedpost. I do not put detail on those things, but I am on the guy because people are going to want to know who is this guy in this room because it's the first cut. This is the guy waking up. And then we're going to have this here, here, a bit more darkness here. And we're going to go ahead and keep this happening here. We're just going to keep going. And now we've got the layer. And I'm going to merge down. Now, what do we do to make this have extra lighting? And it's going to be really simple. We're going to make another layer and we're going to drag it below layer five. We're going to call this, let's rename it for our purposes. I usually don't, but for our purposes, I am. I'm going to go lighting, rename it lighting. And then I'm going to use a selection tool. We're going to have a rectangle and then I'm going to select this area only. I'm going to choose a medium gray, drag from the inkwell over with my pen. That might've been too fast. I'll do it again for you. I'll do it one more time. And I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and move it over. So I'm going to select that area, tap the, uh, the color, drag the color over, let go. And it's going to fill the area up for me. It's just going to make my life easier. So let's keep going. We're going to go select that panel and fill it with color. Now, how are we going to make this have lighting? Well, remember where our source of light is. Our source of light is that sunrise. And that source of light is going to light everything around it, except for most of this room. And that's where we're going to play with the white brush, the airbrushing. And it's going to be really quick and fast. This is how fast we're drawing. It's ideal that you have this much happen at once. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. And so we don't spill over. It's a quick trick. Tap the area with the gray shading. You're going to choose alpha lock. So that means if you paint outside of the square, it won't appear. So we're going to start with the dark, a bit darker, and we're going to choose an airbrush. I'm going to choose an airbrush with a soft edge and increase it. I'm going to go to the opacity and go delete it, like go down a bit more. So I'm going to make it look like we've chosen our base layer. Now we're adding in our shadows and you can see, as you can see, I can make the brush a bit bigger and I'm going to go ahead and just add in just to the edges here, just on the edges. It's kind of like a vignette that we're adding here and we're only adding in here a little bit at a time. Okay. Now we have now come to the panel with the room. So what do we do for the room? We do the same thing. We're going to have some lighting coming in from the outside and we're going to have some of this lighting reveal our character in bed and it's going to probably go over and we'll tighten that up a bit more. So let's zoom in and go into the guy in bed and let's really play with the bed. Let's shrink the brush size. Let's increase the opacity. Let's shrink the brush size, not as much and increase the opacity. And what we're going to do is like that. This dude's just waking up, man. That's how this works. He's waking up like this. And we're going to have that the guy is in bed and it's been a crap night. He might have been watching football. We don't know. That's the whole idea about storytelling. But we're asking questions, and that's the key to storytelling. Let's increase the opacity. We're going to keep the airbrush. What we're going to do is now work on the highlights. We've added the mid tones. We've added the dark tones. We've added the lines. Now we're going to add the highlights. Go ahead. 
brightest spot, it's the sun. The brightest spot's the sun. Let's play with the brush sizes here and let's, let's have it make it look like we're actually going to go ahead and follow the lines here really loosely though. We're not going tight. We're going loose. Okay. I'm going to go loose here and look at that. Look at that. Here we go. As you can see, we're going to go ahead and add the highlight where the light would reach naturally in a scene. And we're going to go ahead and do this, but we're going to reduce the opacity now. And we're going to increase the brush sizes. And just on the top edge, we're going to go like this, maybe a bit bigger, like this. That's better. That's better. I'm going to reduce the brush size. And then I'm going to increase the opacity. I'm going to go like this, like that is a bit much, but I'm going to show you a little trick to create really cool looking sun rays. Go over the areas where you put the, um, the, like these line streaks, these sun streaks like this. Okay. Hey, that looks cool, right? Yeah. I'm going to make a cooler. I'll show you the secret. I'm revealing all my secrets here. We're going to go back to choose our brush. We'll choose uh, the smudge, the little finger smudge. I'm going to choose uh, the soft airbrush around it and we're going to reduce the opacity on that too. We don't want it to be too strong, but we're going to just push, 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 push. And it's going to naturally look like the sun is pushing its light out and across as the sun rises. So let's copy and do this again and go like that. And it's going to be, you can just rotate your canvas. It'll be really cool. No one will say you shouldn't be rotating and people that do that. I mean, why are they doing that? You got to draw the way you're comfortable, right? And the great thing is about procreate is that you can be literally legitimately draw anywhere you have the time to draw what you like. It could be for someone else. It could be for you. And here we go. Look at this. We're creating the sun sunrise here. And this is so key to what we're doing. Go ahead and increase, shrink the, the brush sizes here. And then we're going to go like this. Increase the opacity and like that. And if you wanted to make it more dynamic, you totally can. You can add another layer of just lighting if you wanted to. And you can totally get away with it. No one will know. It'll be awesome. It'll be so cool. So we're adding our lighting effect here. I didn't realize I was still using the brush, the, uh, the brush for the um, smudging, but it was really working for me. And I was like, why isn't it doing the landscape there? It's like, ah, oh, it's because it's on that. So here we go. It's looking like the sun is coming out. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna increase that. And we're gonna just go across because the, the ground closest to the sun, technically in this, it would be there. And by the time the sun reaches all the way out, you know, and it's going to go like this and just kind of go, but like messy, you don't need to go super tight defined. We're going to go like this here. We're going to do a big like that, just like this. And we're going to shrink it. It's the way to go ahead to convey the emotion of the scene and what's happening. It's a new dawn. You know, it's a whole new day. It's another day. Everyone experiences this one thing. But how do you make it interesting? How do you make it beautiful? And how can you make it pleasing to the eye? And this is a way of doing it here. And we're going to continue this on here like that. There you go. See? And it's sunny. And let's add some to the room. Not so much double tap to undo and we're going to go ahead and just there you go like this. We see there's something else in this room that's hitting this and we want to go ahead and continue doing that here. You know, we want to see the rest of the room. So I'm going to increase this, but lower the opacity because I don't want to show that, you know, it's lighting up all of the room just where the window is. And, you know, I want to do something afterwards to show that we've got a window with glass. So it's, it's a really quick little trick. It's about how, 
how to use your brushes, right? You need to know how to use your brushes. You know, an artist is only as good as its tools, but you know, I can draw with anything, but I can draw fastest and better with Procreate for productions. No one's ever questioned why I'm drawing digital. They're just glad that whatever I can give is easy to convey and they all get the story. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create like a, a glass effect. Let's change our brush. Let's change your brush to, I don't know, what's, what's this look like? Yeah, that'll do. You know, that'll do. We wanna show that there's some glass, you know? We're gonna even add it to this guy here, like that, just like this. You know, a little bit more. We see that the glass is, you know, got layers and the sun's reflecting off it. That's all you need to do right there. Let's go back and choose our airbrush here and finish with our guy. Let's call him, um, let's call him Jonathan. Jonathan's waking up. Remember, the sun is outside the window pointing that direction. So all the light source is going to be coming there we'll add some on the bedpost like that remember it's a sphere there and this is a straight edge so we got to remember the geometry of what we're you working with here okay so let's not forget that at all and let's just kind of go like this like this and he's gonna get yeah he's gonna have a bit of that you know it's really simple you know it's not that hard once you really know what you're doing you, a lot of people that i know that can draw it can't figure out how to do this part of a storyboard it's like well you just have to basically play with the basic rules of lighting and once you understand lighting and photography and cinematography editing you know you can figure these things out also if you work on a lot of productions you'll be able to have some you know some things that might actually help with um you know how to get this shot done faster and how quick can we get in and out of that you know a lot of people that want an opening shot say like this won't have the time to go ahead i'm just kind of adding in some lines for flair just because and there you go this is our scene this is our lighting and how we're going to show that this is one shot that's another layer let's do this right now we're going to create something I love doing and I'm going to choose my ink. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at medium and I'm going to do it this way. You'll be surprised how easy it is. I'm going to make a rectangle just like this. Edit shape, polyline, quadrilateral. Okay, let's try and make it a more accurate rectangle guys. Sorry. So let's draw the most accurate rectangle um, this old man can do. Rectangle. There you go. And just like this, you know, rectangle, and there's a way of manipulating. So once you draw it and you hold it, Procreate will fill in the gaps and create a rectangle, quadrilateral, or a polyline for you. And then you can, as you can see the dots there, you can manipulate where they go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a triangle, just like that. And it's going to say edit shape, triangle. Done. That's it. I'm good there. Okay, I'll turn off the other layers so you guys can see what's going on. So once we do this, it's really simple. I'm going to go ahead and erase all that stuff. I'm just going to choose the eraser tool, right? I just want to make sure that I get in there right up to the edge. This is it. And I just want those edges selected. And I'm going to go ahead and choose my selection tool and then freehand. And with the Apple Pencil, go ahead and freehand remove clear. That's it but it's gonna show up as just black lines and I want them to be solid on the inside. So I'm gonna choose white and I'm gonna go ahead and fill it. Oops, no, I want white. Sorry, pal. You've had your time. White and you can't tell, can you? Turn off your background color. There you go. That's your arrow. This is our arrow. This is what we're doing. And here's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this and I'm gonna go ahead and Shrink this a bit more to the corner that I want like that. But this is why I love Procreate is I'm going to go ahead and give this a distortion like this, like this. 
you know, you're going to have to play around to figure out how you're going to create this distortion. And uh, I like to have the arrow appear breaking the panel that way sometimes, just to kind of show that this is a camera move. Swipe on the layer, duplicate it, and then tap on the tool and flip horizontal. That's it. That's all you need to do. Tap on the tool again, and we want to go magnetics. Make sure your magnetics are on. Move it over, because this is what we're doing now. We're going to go ahead, tap, merge down, swipe, duplicate, select your tool, flip vertical. Now move it up to about that. And you know what? I really like this. I really like how this is looking because now we're getting that this is a camera move back and we're going to swipe, duplicate, and then drag it down to about here. And then I want to keep going, but you know what? Here's my problem the arrows are huge. So we're going to go ahead and shrink the arrows a bit and then it will look not so obtrusive. It's more about the arrows before than it was about the panel and the camera move. So what we're going to do is freehand move all the other arrows around like this. Yeah, and that's it. And once you have the arrows the way you like them, then you can just, you're good to go. You're good to go. Let's go ahead and move this up here. There you go. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate. And again, you know how to do this now. Swipe, duplicate, selection tool, keep your magnetics on, and keep moving the arrows around, just like that. Just like that, and the arrows should always be on the very top. Now we have so many arrows, I don't want that. I want my arrows to be one layer. Now we have it. So if you wanted to add text to everything, uh, you go ahead and you add, add, add text and we're going to go ahead and change the color tap on the color and let's type in capitals camera pulls back from sunrise and let's just go select all the, the you can see it's all text now we got to go edit and we're going to change the font size to um, let's go, let's go about this much. No, yeah, 25 is fine. And as you can see, I'm not, you know, it's a good clean font. I usually just go either, um, Arial or Courier and it just makes it look like it was typed. You know, you, you kind of keep it more official that way. I kind of like that myself personally. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, fix my spelling mistake here because my wife gets mad at me at my spelling mistakes and there's a funny story I have about um, the uh, a director I work with and he only called me up not to change the art but my spelling mistakes as well so what we have here is we're going to go ahead and keep adding our text here camera pulls back uh, and we're going to say uh, window we're going to make sure it's all capitals here window frame uh, moves in let's edit the style let's change select all and put this back to 25 about that I try and keep my fonts about the same exactly 25 and I'll just move that here and here we go window frame moves and then Let's just add another text and we're going to say um, camera pulls back more revealing bedroom. Select all and we're going to go ahead and edit style and change our font size to 25 just to kind of keep everything about the same. Oops, keep that at zero and you know, it's, it's, uh, you cannot type in the size of the font here. If you, if you're not able to go ahead and use import your artwork into Photoshop to do that, 
then the best thing to do is just to use this on um, to use procreate here telling you right now it has saved my butt multiple times and then we're going to go ahead we're going to add the last panel we're going to give it something jonathan wakes up jonathan wakes up in bed and it's a really simple scene uh, it's not that complex of a, of a camera move, but it's enough to help them understand where it is they need to go ahead. Jonathan wakes up in bed. And usually I just, you can go ahead if you want and type in all of the lettering or the, the number scene signs. I'm just going to go ahead and use my technical pen and just go scene one, cancel. I go back here, scene one, shot one. I'm going to go like this, continued. None of my directors has ever complained about that. But when I have the time, and time is always very rare and expensive commodity, continued, and this is going to be scene one and shot two. And there you have it. Uh, if you don't have the time, you have to handwrite it. If you do have the time, go ahead and type it in. If you don't have the time, use the text tool and everything within Procreate. If you do have time, put it into Photoshop and do it better. I just want to go ahead and add one more thing here. I forgot that we didn't add a window frame um, to this uh, a bit of the white window frame right here. So let's go like this. Like that. Here. I have just a bit of the window. We see that we got the window. There we go. And now we see that John is wakes up in bed. So there you go. There you have it, guys. This is how you create storyboards in Procreate using something simple like a pre-made template for you to work with. Import them, and in this quick amount of time, you'll be able to have your panels ready and sent out to dis and distribute towards the rest of the production. How do you share it? Tap on the tools under actions, share, and you have many options to share it to. So you can go ahead and go from there. So hope this helps. Please keep practicing and keep drawing. Take it easy.